Well, right, hello, YouTube Lamb. My name is Wallboy Plus 69 and welcome back to Doki Doki Blues. Guys, we're picking up where we left off in the last episode. I honestly thought I was going to record a gameplay video today because I recorded like three in a row yesterday. I'll fall one Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday by the time you see this. Uh, but I thought, eh, why not? I had nothing better to do. No one wants to talk to me. You message me as usual. I thought, okay, why not play Doki Doki uh, Blue Sky just for the heck of it. So we're picking up where we left off in the last episode. It's actually, still, again, 7.30 at night. I don't know why I record this late at night and I don't go to bed late. I have trouble sleeping at night. I have freaking, I don't know, I feel like I have carpal tunnel syndrome because when I sleep, my armpit and go numb when I, when I sleep and all that freaks me out. I think I'm having a stroke for whatever reason every night. But anyway, enough of that, me rambling. We're picking up where we left off in the last episode and see always saying burr. It's gotten so cold. October was so warm. Why couldn't it stay that way? We're in November, you know. But last year's November was so mild. Uh, it's so unfair. Other places got other places got really cold winters. Things like penguins, reindeer, and even Frosty the Snowman. Sir, you know that Frosty the Snow. You know that Frosty the Snowman wasn't real, right? Of course, silly. But what if you make an actual snowman and name him Frosty? Pretty sure that doesn't count. She waves my comment away with. And Danish huff and air visible of her mouth. I just wanted the snow. Seeing the gentle snow fall at night when you're tucked up in the cozy inside with some hot chocolate. Gross. It's so peaceful, all of all the untouched snow, and when it's quiet, you should probably spend Christmas with Yuri this year. You should probably spend Christmas with Yuri this year, you know. Sounds like you two share the same thoughts. Oh well, it's obvious really to have fun and have a fun snowball fight, so snow to make star angels. Star angels? Snow angels? And missing a day or two of school. <laughs> I guess it's during the literature club I started to appreciate nature a bit more. Although I still love summer. You and me both, Siori. That hasn't changed much then? Oh no. What? She's filling around with her pocket as we looking for something. I left my gloves at home! And it's gotten so cold so easily. Having cold fingers is the worst. Well, having wet socks on. Ooh, blow, blow on them, Siori. Blow on my hands? Yeah, I'll warm it up. Trust me. She takes my advice or judging the look on her face. Help the effort. <sighs> Sometimes it works. It's a stupid idea. It helps a little bit, but they're still cold. I just wish I had. Pro I wish. I just wish I had something proper to wear to wear for them. Mm -hmm. uh, she stands there, patting any, at any forms in my mind. Oh, that benefit profile. Give me your hands. Doing my best to ignore bleeding hard. I take her hands away and start rubbing on them. What are you doing? I roll my eyes, hoping she would suddenly really start suddenly sitting cold enough to be near the situation. What does it look like I'm doing? You know, slow across the back and feel her hands warm enough. Given how many how her whole bit of body feels, it's no surprise. I'm half expecting to be steam raining off my fingers by this far. The silence of the air feels heavy, almost as if it some kind of tension. I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it, with, but the humility of the seven enemy makes me feel a bit uncomfortable. Dot dot dot. There, they should be warmer now. I move my hands away, but Siri grips doesn't loosen up, and I expect to. Would you um? Would you mind holding them on just for a little bit longer? It's really sweet what you've done for me. Oh, I get super cold quickly though. Sure. Although, we have to get a move on, otherwise we'll be late. That's okay. And so we make our way to school just like any other day where we walk together. Except for one major difference. We're holding hands. That's my boy. How, that's how you do it. I mean, friends can hold hands, right? I guess. It's not necessarily romantic or anything. It just feels so good. Just like it belongs. Sorry's fingers have been only stuck in the back of my hand and I have to fight the urge to return the favor. I thought, nah, to hell with it. Her hands feel so warm and soft again, so there's no way an up and landing opportunity pass up. Her last softly as her fingers chase the gentle around the back of her hand. She breaks the silent, only slightly as her voice barely audible above the howling wind of her hammering chest. You're pretty quiet, Colm. Sorry. I just, uh, it's okay. You don't have to say sorry. This has been really nice, hasn't it? It has. My mind is screaming at me to say more, to say something romantic and cheesy. I feel so content and warm, but most importantly, safe. With the girl I grew up with, the girl I've shared so many happy memories with, the girl of a bundle of sunshine in my life. Your hands feel really nice. Yours feels really... Don't mess this up, Colin. Ditto. I mean, uh, well, I wouldn't mind warming your hands up again. You know, if they ever get on um, cold. She, that was the language performance I could ever get. Sarah would think otherwise as she burst into laughter. I feel my cheeks flare this time out of embarrassment. Hey, sorry, sorry. You're just so... Damn, I mean, adorable. Yeah, well, so are you. That line, the line is, I don't know enough, and my brain has a chance to even process. This time, Sarah turns out a grill flusher and inner crimson flusher appears on her cheek and she looks away embarrassed. Eh, you can be really cute sometimes, you know that? The deep charted territory, I finally passed some kind of line where to add, add, add here when you trust to when you fresh friends with someone. Although, do I really care? <laughs> wow, wow, wow. She flares flushing to miss, jumps straight in my paw. Wait, are those? Siori! 
What is that in your pocket? Are those gloves? She freezes, look into the deer, calm the headlights. Huh? <laughs> no, of course not. It looks like we're going. Oh, look at the time. We're going to be late. See you at lunchtime. She zooms off with the vigor of a bullet. I left standing there in awe. That girl is so damn sneaky. Then again, it's not like I didn't benefit from her little plan, is it? She'll be the death of me. The high spirits I follow see her roughly disappear in profile. And that was the state of the war between by the and that was the state of the war by the summer of 1917. As he outlines his activity, we'll be doing next. My ears perked up. He mentions we'll be doing in Paris. Shit. By the way, turn your page to 394. The chapter should be the most relevant relevant for the task. Now, if you don't mind, I'll be marking all the homework I should have gotten back from last week. As per usual, his life has some flattering laughter from the class. Emma and I have been working together to make speedy progress. It's about break time, I reckon. I've been meaning to ask, how's that track stuff coming along? Emmy, the season's been great, although there are so many, uh, so many, there aren't as many sessions going on this month. Yeah, I mean, there's still but a lot, but people are, I mean, there's still some, but people are always chicken when it gets cold. No dedication. I hate people. I hate seeing people give up on that stuff. You're and you're running, huh? I gotta give you credit for that, though. I wish I had the draw for exercise. Well, don't think it was like a draw that stops you from exercising, Colton. There's a mysterious look in her eye. You distract. You're distracted. I catch Sakuri looking up at us. Actually, I turn my textbook and scribble for the lazy effort that looked like a moon somewhere. Once his back is turned, my full attention goes back to Emmy. Distracted? By what? By who? Is that what is what you should be asking? The very knowing smile, she makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Come on, Amy. Come, come enough of the riddles. Ha <laughs> ha. See you, right, Colton. I see you two having lunch together all the time. Don't walk with... Don't walk... With, don't you walk with her home as well? I don't know why they teach you how to stalk people at the track club, Amy. <laughs> so do you walk home? Do you walk her home then? So do you stalk me, huh? So do you like her? Uh, hey, I promise I won't tell anymore. Oh, come on. The amount of times I'll let you copy my homework. I grumble under my breath. I have the feeling you... That used to give me the favorite of me. You use it against you. Colton, of course not. It's just a very romantic way you can trust me. Well, ah. Uh, actually, no, I guess I'm being a little pushy, aren't I? Sorry, I shouldn't have. It's all good. He said, it's all good. <laughs> Dude. It's not like I don't want to tell you. It's just, I don't know. It's really confusing. I guess, but simply, simply, yeah, I do like her. <laughs> I knew it. That's so cute, though. How long do you like her? And there's these crushed the deck one. Oh, since we were five? Ah, well, we've always been childhood friends, but over the past years, we started drifting apart. I joined a literature club last month, and well, since then, I've been really enjoying being around her. I guess I never realized how my feelings were. We've been spending so much time together re recently, and I say genuinely, you're noticing a lot of quick perks about her, aren't you? Aw, yeah, the things of how blue her eyes are, and the warm, soft pants, and how cute she looks when she's concentrating. She's always looked, been really good at making me feel at ease. Whatever she's around, I feel I just really I just feel really uh I don't know, I just happy. Oh god, of all the mushy super stuff it sounds super embarrassing. Sorry, I know that must sound really cringy. It doesn't. It's fine, I know the feeling myself. Oh that guy you started dating a couple months ago. That new guy, right? That's the one. So what's it like for you? What do you do think you start noticing about it? I guess I realize how much he really thinks more with his heart. He's a little dense, but I really appreciate how patient he can be. But that's enough about me. Hey, even though your name's close to Emily, you're a bit lower than that bitch from Aliens Away. Just saying, you're all, you at least drop it at one point. At least you don't fucking keep on it out and put me in the friend zone. At least, fuck, I don't know. I'm going to play Emily's Away 3, I guess. Sounds like exactly the same thing is going on here. When are you going to tell Stuart? Uh, well, that's the thing. Ah, Cole, Emmy, damn it, teacher. Everything going well? Yeah, we're just talking about how much I love Stuart, mister. I just, well, it looked like I got into a conversation with Amy and I told totally forgot we were in the classroom. Thankfully, we made enough progress to start securing not to chide us. He studies our notes. Doing well so far, although I added a little more detail about how the United States entered and how the clash against the isolation. After all, I was the turning point of the war from both military and fuller policy perspective. Noted, sir. As he manners off, Amy wasted no time jumping back into the conversation. You're going to tell her, right? I don't know. Part of me wants to, but I'm super nervous. What if she doesn't feel the same way? She dismissed the concern with a frown of her face. Look, I can tell she likes you. How can you, how can possibly female intuition... First mother motherly intuition, now female intuition. No fair. Women get all the psychic powers. Trust me, she spends much, so much time with you, my gut feeling has never been wrong before. She winks at me strangely enough and fills me with a bit, a bit of confidence. Okay, then. I swallow. I guess I'll tell her. I just don't know how to do it. Look, it's easy. All you have to do is be honest with her. Tell her what you told me. Then you really like spending time with her and you want to be your, your girlfriend. Easy. Hey, uh, this with me when I tell her... When I... When I... 
get a crush on somebody, at least I, man, uh, at least I have the balls to tell the girl I like it. Sometimes it turns out, doesn't turn out as I expected, but at least I ha I'm manly enough to do that. I remember one time, one of my uh, high school drama friends, I had a crush on, she's been with her same boyfriend since I, for like four, four years since I basically, we, after we know each other for like four months, and well, I told her that I liked her, and she let me down better than I expected, because she, I mean, she, yeah, she's like, oh, I only see you as a friend, but she did it really, really nicely, because she told me she only saw me as a friend, I'll find someone, someone much better than her, and I'll find someone special, and basically, four, five, four years later, I've pretty much given up on finding true love. If it happens, it ha if it happens, great, if not, oh well, I'm not sweating on it, so, she leans back triumphantly, Psh, easy for you to say, oh, uh, I never confess or ever takes online. Yeah, that's how I do it too. So that's probably not a good idea. Has to be done in person. Well, it's Thursday. T well, it's Thursday today, so you gotta tell her tomorrow. Trust me, you don't want the anticipation hanging during the weekend. But that's too soon. Think of it this way: the sooner you tell her, the sooner you can start dating. I won't lie, that's a pretty appealing prospect. Tomorrow it is. Uh, let me know how it goes. Means to find my gloves this time, huh? Jerry flares around nervously. Yeah, I guess I didn't know they were in my pocket all the time. Wait a minute, we're not going to the literature club? Damn. She pulls them on. A I hit the pang of disappointment. I was hoping to keep her warm by holding her hands again. Hang on, Siori. My scarf must become loose. You're still silly, Colton. Didn't your mom teach you how to properly tie a scarf? Uh, yeah, I just never got around to actually pulling it into practice. Let me help you. She stands in front of me, completely undoing the scarf and placing the scarf on my head. Whoa! Scared me. <laughs> Damn it. From front of the other now they can see your breath from the misty cold in front of me, I can also feel it on my face. As she works, she brushes against my neck and collar. I have to force myself not to burrow in her touch. There. Aw. With the final loop, the scarf now sits snugly and providing the warmth that she feels. Even after she finishes, her hands linger around my neck despite the feathers that does like to be still full cold. Thank you, Siori. Much better. You're welcome. I thought. Thank you, Tommy. During the war, a bunch of miner, miners and bombs set off explosions so loud it was heard in London all the way from France, over 140 miles away. Damn, London is only 140 miles from France? God damn, I thought it was further than that. That must have been one big explosion. Do you think the miners did it? Did the whole cool guys don't look at don't look at explosion things? Maybe that, that's where the movie directors got the idea from. I'll ask security tomorrow. Knowing him, I'll probably just get off the sarcastic answer though. <laughs> I'll tell you an interesting math fact. But math isn't that interesting. Oh yeah, I'm definitely with you there. Seriously, you can write a poem with numbers or stories. I don't think I ever seen my parents using the quadratic quad formula or work the area of a triangle in real life. Yeah, math teaches you pointless shit. There's no reason to fucking use math. All you just gotta do is one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you're good to go. And my teacher tell me math is a lifelong still. Well, she is fucking wrong. Really? I found it pretty useful. You know, and counting the amount of times she complained about something. Hey! You said you agree with me. Kidding, kidding. Anyway, I'll catch with you catch with you tomorrow, Siri. Have a good one. Bye. Man, what a long today day has been today. I can lean in for more. I can feel like I lean for more Emmy than I did security. I guess tomorrow's the day I finally ask Siri, huh? But being totally honest, I'm kind of terrified. But then again, how much longer will I have to do with this invitation? Live all over. Just do what Silas with love says. Just do it. Besides, Emmy has confidence. Is confidence you already likes me so, but it should it should go smoothly, right? If an emphasis on should. After all, she does spend a lot of time with me, and the trick is with and the trick with her gloves this morning. I just hope I'm not misreading all the signs, or else tomorrow's gonna be super awkward. Dot dot. Ooh, flashback. What's up, Colton? You're looking really glum. It's nothing, Siri. Hey. I know something's bothering you. You can talk to me. It'll be okay. I didn't do well in my end of year exams. People found out and they kept laughing at me. Plus, my parents are going to be so mad. I'm an idiot. Hey, you aren't an idiot, Colton. You're not stupid at all. But I messed up so badly. You're still really smart to me, though. You helped me with my homework so many times. And you really tried your best, right? Yeah. That's fine, then. That's all that counts. Teachers can't expect more, can they? Yeah, I suppose you're right. And those meanies, they're just jealous. Jealous, huh? Of what? Well, you're really good at the floor of lava game. And I'm just gonna sit. And I was gonna say we can play now. That'll cheer you up. I know it. I don't know. Come on. You can be Spider-Man again. Okay, let's start here. Yay. The next air passes by a blur within moments. We're already hopping around the room. 
dipping from chair to chair, room to room. Ha, <laughs> watch out! The lava monster is here! Uh, I'm never gonna see see mom's house plant the same way again! Come on, Sierra, you got this! The further the big gap between two couches, Sierra appears over the edge and see if she can make it. Even if you fall, I've got you. Okay. She jumps soaring through the air and lands right next to me, trying for the grand office. Aye! Way to go! She grins and offers her hand a high five. Having fun? Oh, hi, Mom. You two look like you're having fun, having the time of your life. Good to see you again, Sierra. And you. We were just playing the floor is lava game. Quiet and active imagination the pair you have, huh? Mother, Mom smiles eagerly. Joys of childhood, huh? But even if you'd like some snacks, I think we have some tempura. So his face brightened immediately. Ooh, that would be really nice. Thank you. If that's okay. Of course, dear. How about you, son? Uh, te yeah, tempura works for me as well, Mommy. Thanks. Oh, and by the way, watch out for that tall house plant in the other room. I've heard a secretly scary lava dragon in disguise. She winks and leaves. Oh, that's cute. Aw. I got a message. Somebody messaged me. I'm going to read that. Man, it stays like this where I don't really, I really, what I really, it stays like these that I really with my dad was around. I think that's a typo. I think it means wish. I'm sure he experienced of all the nervous association of asking a girl out. Relax, Colton, relax. You're just asking your childhood best friend to be your girlfriend. No big deal, right? What could go wrong? Who am I kidding? Of course it's a big deal. What? What? Okay, 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 okay. I remember about three years ago, I I would I wouldn't say I have a childhood friend, but I know this girl. I was like maybe eight, nine, ten years old. We haven't seen each other since we were like ten years old. And so I remember her messaging me like three years ago. She's like, hey, can I talk to you about something? I'm sure. Okay, sure. What's up? She's like, well, I've thought about it for a while, but you want to go out with me? I'm like, okay, sure. Why not? We'll go out. Uh, two months later, it was just a uh, fucking shit show. It was miserable. Well, she's a nice friend and all, but a really mean girlfriend. But anyway, although, uh, what did those websites online say? Just relax, be yourself, be confident. Wow, some advice that was. Thanks, Internet. I was just... I'm just banking on Amy's tuition of being correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. Please be correct. It's gotten really cold these days, hasn't it? Yeah, you're right. The lips Definitely. Winter is such a pain. It definitely makes makes waking up for tennis practice a little harder. It does have its upsides, however. It really makes me. It really makes the perfect weather. Snuggle up indoors with a soothing hot chocolate and a nice. But what about coffee? Uh, seeing all the snow fall during the night side is really relaxing too. Although it gets ruined out the next day when people walk through it. Having the end of semester same exam is such a drag, too. I can't help but turning out the conversation today is going to be going by real slowly. Although the class this morning, I can barely concentrate. I'm just picturing how my managed conversation with Siori will go down. Safe to say there has definitely been focus on my mind. Emily shoot, shooting me no no one looks heavier off she's doing too much such more one of the insanity, uncertainty in my head. And the club where we just finished sharing poems so I can't wait for the session to end. And people got really mushy around Christmas time as well. You know what? I like, currently have to get a whole lot of stuff. That's supposed to be for Valentine's Day, not Christmas. Yeah. You say it like it's a bad thing, not to keep. Come on, it'd be so lovely to have someone warm up when the night night gets cold. Don't you think? Hmm. Is that a hint? Or is it just totally misprinting? Psh, no way. I can see where the both of you come in to get coming from, actually. On the one hand, the, the physical intimacy must be quite nice. Although, I have to admit, the public displays of affection can be a bit overwhelming. Yeah, especially when a couple, couple start playing, playing tonsil tennis with each other. Ah! <laughs> tonsil tennis! I don't know what it means, but I'm gonna Google it real quick. <laughs> Five minutes later. I just looked at what tonsil tension is, it's French kiss, and make it out, so... <laughs> I've gotta add a couple, two, couple times. I uh, just never got laid. But anyway, interesting way of putting that Natsuki. I'm right though, uh, say that stuff when you're at home, for real. Kind of like when I tell people, girls who I don't care about the boyfriend, I don't give a fucking shit what you do behind closed doors. Stop telling me that fucking shit. It does not interest me. Fucking one of my, I had a cousin who kept talking about her boyfriend every five fucking seconds. She just went on and on and on and I basically told him to stop talking about him for one. She blocked me on Facebook. Bitch. But what about the presents? Print or something else that makes Christmas so enjoyable. Buying gifts for other people and seeing their reactions, that's definitely a rewarding feeling, especially when they really like your choice. Don't you think, Colton? Don't mind me. Just trying to figure out how to ask you to be my girlfriend. Oh, yeah, everything's fine, you know. Just trying to figure out the best way to ask you to be my girlfriend. Oh, yeah, just trying to decide what to get you 
eat you guys for Christmas, that's all. Wrecking my brains, I this way, trying to follow what I was just saying. Let's say I had to get a present for Monica. What would you ask for? Can't buy a piano, though. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'll be telling... Well, that'd be telling, wouldn't it? It would ruin the mystery. Well, you're always busy, like, with a billion things all at once, right? So, I don't know, maybe, like, a diary or a planner or something? Or a tennis racket? I have no idea. Those aren't bad ideas, actually. It's always difficult for buying presents for someone, especially when you get older. When you're younger, you can think of a hundred fucking things you want for Christmas. But when you get older, you have no clue what you want. As you get older, you don't know what you want. I'm just fine with... Basically, as I get older for Christmas, I still get gifts every year because my parents are nice. As it gets older, I just ask, you know, just give me money. That's all I, I want. I can just buy movies, clothes, something else, but not. Especially when someone says you don't know how particularly, you don't know particularly well. You could, but you can do with the watch, Monica. A watch? Why? Well, you could, what, what you can do with the free time. One day, Siori's jokes will get a little funnier. <laughs> Finally. The school day sure makes it sweet time. While they drag on be lying for Sam and ready for what's about to come. Do it, man. You got it. Hey, CR, you got it. Here we go. Um, are you busy after school today? Nope. Well, apart from homework, but I didn't get much today. Okay, well, um, I never this question back in my head. CR, do you want to go make love? <laughs> do you think we can hang out for a bit today after school? Please don't pick up all of this fish in my voice. Sure, my place or yours? Yours sounds good. Okay, we haven't spent time together after school in a long time. What made you change your mind? Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Why am I getting all spirits of fishing? She doesn't know my plan. Just going along with this morning. Nothing, nothing. Oh, well, you don't have a Christmas tree for you to decorate, do you? It's barely mid-November, Sierra. I bet too early. Not for my long. November 1st, the fucking Christmas sheet is up the... Well, she only makes like three days for Thanksgiving. Like, all of November, all of December for Christmas. Like, literally, she's a fucking Christmas fanatic. Aww. Fucking not my mom, mom. Anyway, what do you want to do, Colton? I don't think it's healthy for a human to heart to be fast. Well, I uh wanted to tell you something, Siri. Okay, what's up? Here we go. It's now or never. Do it. Uh, well, look, I really don't know the best way of saying this, but Siri, I she's just sitting there patiently waiting for me to speak. There's no hint of inspiration. We look in those blue eyes of her. Taking a deep breath, I stare at the floor and let my mouth talk before my brain has a chance to catch up. Look, Siri. I really like you, and I'm really sorry if this changes anything between us, but I really value our friendship, and I wouldn't want it to ruin anything. So, I guess ever since we were kids, I've always drawn to you, and uh, well, seeing you again after all those years have been really, really nice, and I'm so glad we get along like the huge gap of our history was never there. I really like you, Suri, in that way. Well, I, I was just wondering if you felt you do the same way, or I troll up nothing is cringing out, but my confession must have sound. So much for being confident. The silence is getting overwhelmed, lifting my eyes, and I force myself to meet her gaze. The expression on her face is hard to read. She smiled, but at the same time, there was definitely a hit of sadness behind her. I should have seen this coming. <laughs> I guess it's really my own fault, right? Fault? What do you mean? I was selfish. What? How? I really like you too, Colton. I should be feeling relieved and happy to hear those words. You can't help but feel a bit of something totally amiss. I think I've always have when we first met. She smiles warmly, the the tears are forming her eyes trickle down her face as she blinks. You always been so nice to me, and even when I didn't deserve it, even after we drifted the park, you were still willing to talk to me and even see how I was doing. You took interest in my club, and even though I didn't think you would enjoy literature, and at first I was a little unsure. I wasn't sure things would be like how they were when we were kids. Deep down, I was hoping they would, and over time, I guess I got my wish because they did. Your jokes, your personality, just being around you every day was like waking up to remind easier times. I don't get it, Siri. If you'd like me to, if you're happy with me being around me, what's the problem? She shakes her head. It's not that easy. You just don't understand. Of course I don't, Siori. Can you blame me? I can tell there's something going on with you, but every time you try to, I try to help you shut me down. To it's my, it's to any surprise I don't understand. That day before the festival, when you wouldn't even talk to anyone, and that day you weren't even at school. Something wasn't right. That day I just got a gut feeling. I've always been able to tell you what something was wrong, Siri. No matter how would I hide it, I really wish you couldn't. The horrible nightmare you had. You know, some, you know something, things you were saying. You think you're useless that you don't want to do it anymore. What are you talking about? Please, you right, just tell me. What's so hard? What's so tiring? What do you What do you don't want anymore? What do you, Why do you think you're useless? Did someone say that something nasty to you? I swear to God, if you've been saying this stuff, tell me and I will go, fuck. You're right, Colton. There is someone. I clenched my fist so hard, like digging into my pal. All right, who's who? It's me. <sighs> I blinked through a five with that last response back to hear from her. You, who on earth, what on earth does that mean? You're saying this to yourself? We were just going, we were just going around in circles, Siori. Please, enough with the mysteries and vague answers. I'll be honest with you. I've been honest with you 
What could this horrible, dark secret you have be so useless? Uh, makes you so useless and unlikable. Depression. For the second time this evening, I'm completely lost for words. Huh? That's my secret, Colton. You're depressed? I've had depression for most of my life. Oh. Oh my god, Sierra. That was probably the most likely response I can give to you. I'm sorry. Don't be. I would have expected. I wouldn't have expected you to know how that response. She gets a short humorous laugh. I don't know what to say. I had no idea. I never would have known. You always seem so happy, cheerful, but I don't get it. I thought you were so happy. She sighs and a tear slowly falls down her cheek. No, Colton, I never was. It was just a mask. I really tried to keep it. Her voice raises as she speaks. Fresh tears fall down from her face. Unlike the day of her nightmare, she makes no attempt to hide it. Her secret has been laid bare. Every day, waking up, getting ready, like walking to school, all of those things that people take for granted. It's been so scary, so difficult. I was so scared that any moment I let my mask slip and you see the real me. So that's what you're referring to when you said you were tiring, tired, they didn't want that you didn't want to do it anymore? She nods, Sally. All of those other things too, like waking up and eating too. I don't have the energy to cook actual meals. So that's why you went for pizza and other junk food. God, it's all coming together now. And the whole time there's been so bittersweet. Seeing you again, hanging out just like we used to. For the first time we feel such a long time, I felt something that felt alien to me. Happiness. It wasn't It wasn't much, but it was something enough to help me get through these days. Like when you warmed up my hands, I felt bad asking for you to help, but sometimes I just couldn't help it. It's so hard fighting against with, with your heart once. As I started to like you, it terrified me. But why? Because I was getting because it was getting harder and harder to resist being selfish. Selfish? Selfish and dragging you into my mess. You shouldn't be bothering with someone like me. Part of me wondered if being so miserable would put your mind off. Another sad smile. But it seemed but it didn't seem like you're minded. No, you really stuck around and people tried their best comfort me, even though I was a horrible to you and you kept distance. And now here we are, a situation that both well, what I want to fear in the most. I'm worthless, Colton. I couldn't care less about myself. I just want others to be happy. And now I mess that up because now you know my profession and no one you definitely worry. I really couldn't win either way. I'm so sorry for dragging you into this, Colton. I've tried so hard, but with you here telling me you like me too, her voice misses the point of running tears with anguish. For once, I just wanted to embrace the self to be your girlfriend. I'm stopping you, Siori. It's almost like another person who just, who just, who just, like Siri has been talking. No, it, it's like it's a different person. As she spoke, I simply feel the fur into disbelief. How could it be? How could they that may help you care for your childhood parent was harboring such a sad secret? You're definitely not selfish at all, Siri. How could you be? You're one of the most selfless people that I know. You make it your duty to make everyone else happy. I can never not care about you. You're my best friend, and I do anything to make you happy again. I'm just so glad you told me this. Why? Oh, just come here. Please don't hug me. Ignoring her cries, I embrace her, calling her bless me. To my surprise, she spills and pulls free and pushes me away from her. I didn't even think she had the strength. I'm sorry, Colton. I just really can't deal with this right now. Can you please leave? Fuck. Leave, Siori. Look what you just told me. Do you honestly expect me to go like it didn't mean anything? Yes. I stared at her interestingly what doesn't change. All sorts of feelings swirling through my head right now. I still try to process what she just told me. And even after suffering for years, she is still this suffering. Anger floods through my brain. Probably the unreasonable reaction at this point. I'm too mostly charged to listen around me. Oh, so that's how it is, right? I'm allowed to tell you my problems, and you're allowed to cheer me up, but I'm not allowed to help you? What kind of friendship is that, Siori? No, don't, don't do that. You'll never understand. Of course I won't, because you never let anyone in. Is it any surprise I don't understand? I instantly regret raising my voice and my words leave my mouth. Just go, please. Without a choice, I de dejectedly comply. God damn it. Back in my own house, my mind starts racing a million miles an hour. Now that the heat of the moment has passed, I shamelessly realized that I can probably handle the, that pretty poorly. It was frustrating, but kept in the dark, having such huge bombs was dropping me there again, being unable to help. Like getting angry at her was the worst thing to do. Man, I'm such an idiot. Ugh, God damn it, Emmy, so much for female intuition. I'll fuck you, Emmy. But, uh, well, there's one person who hopefully should be able to help. Grabbing my phone, I hastily punch the phone and hope she's free. Mom, Colin, hi, what's up? Mom, I told Sierra how I felt, and did it go well? Yeah, but, for, but not for necessarily a thing. I don't really know how to put this, but I'm trying to pursue this myself, saying it out loud. Sarah so really likes me, but she couldn't bring herself to act the feelings she's been depressed. The heavy silence for a beat. Depressed? I know, Siori, of all people. I see, I see. My goodness, that's awful. Poor girl, I hope she'll be alright. I really hope she will be. Mom, I acted like such an idiot. What happened? Well, she told me that she was depressed. I tried to comfort her by hugging her, but she pushed me away and told me to leave. And I... Uh, I'm kicking myself. Go on. Her tone is gentle. I got angry at her and raised my voice. It was just so frustrating. I'm not able to help her. I wasn't thinking straight. Darling, 
You're not an idiot at all. I understand it must be so hard and frustrating. No, shouting at her wasn't the best idea, but it's not like you were out to hurt her, isn't it? Well, no. It happens during arguments, don't worry. There are so many other things, too. She says she feels worthless and selfish and even telling me what's going on. Uh, so that explains you're rejecting your hug. There's a sigh of relief on the other end. Sweetheart, this must be difficult for both of you. It must feel so overwhelming. Libby, I know your situation like this. You do? Mm -hmm. I once dated someone with depression. It wasn't easy. It's one of the hardest things to watch with someone we love suffer like that. And we just don't understand why they say so negative things about themselves. Yeah, that's so true for someone with depression like myself. Man, it's especially worse when you have a therapist tell you that you don't have depression. It's just all in your fucking head. I know I talked about this in one of my Doki Doki Literature Club videos, and it's just not a fun thing to deal with. It's really more than fucking sadness. Fucking what pissed me off. Something I literally fucking Gene Simmons from Kids said that all depressed people kill, should kill themselves. And he has no fucking idea what depression is. So Gene Simmons from Kids, you can go fuck yourself, you piece of shit. I don't give a shit if you're a rock star or a legend. If you don't know what... The, Okay, I don't give a shit if you're seeing Gene Simmons, a famous millionaire rock star, or just Joe Ball on the street. If you tell somebody, to, some, if you tell, if you say that kind of shit to the press people, you have no heart and you deserve the fucking rot in hell. So fuck you, Gene Simmons. It was horrible, Mom. It didn't even feel like Siri was talking. I just never saw that coming. I mean, I mean, I knew there was something that was going on with her, but I just haven't thought having days when you're allowed to move. Well, no. Well, from what I gather, she's really awfully convinced that we're in the fest day. If any, con if there's any consolation, I don't think there could be anyone guess that she was depressed. Either way, the worst part about depression is that it's probably just so loud and convincing. It's got a horrible tendency to dominate They're the whoever's got it, and it can be really hard for them to take off depression tinted in glasses. It's an illness, and unfortunately, mental illness just can be significant to physical ones. Something I wish your country would recognize. So, what can I do for her? What can I do? I can I even do anything? You definitely can help her out. I didn't mean to make you feel. I didn't mean to make you feel like you were powerless or anything. It's okay. I'm glad you're being honest, I guess. It's just kind of hard to realize exactly what we're dealing with here, so it's kind of so to help be informed, right? You become really mature because I'm proud of how you were handling this. I'm not handling this well, Mom. I had no idea how to react. I shouted at her, and she was in tears. But anyone who isn't a mental health professional know how to deal with this or to what you be told. Anyway, the most important advice I can give you is not expect it quick because depression isn't something that can be fixed with love. It isn't your job to fix her, but you can still help her. I was starting to think I was totally useless here. Of course not, darling. She loves you as well. Don't forget. I wouldn't be doing... It won't be all doom and gloom. You have days where things should be normal and she really wasn't thinking of it. There are some days that literally... Some days, or at least most days, I with my depression, I can go on and go on and about with my day, but there have been days where I just don't feel like doing anything. I just want to lay in bed and do fucking nothing. It gets that bad. But then... You have days where she won't have the energy to get out of bed, where she just feels like not talking about it. Exactly. And it's really important that you are as patient and understanding as you can be during these those days. Oh, and communication is the big one. That goes for any relationship, really. It sounds really obvious, but talk to her. Let her tell you about how she feels in this world and what her thoughts and feelings were. That's going to be, that's, there are, are going to be promises, there are going to be fights, there are going to be help. Those are healthy in any part of a relationship. It's something, if something's bugging you, something's bothering her, just talk it out. Communication is the key to a successful relationship. Believe me. I can't help but laugh. You sound like one of those relationship gurus. It's a mother's job to guide her child, you know. And as the side, never underestimate how helpful it can be to just to listen to someone's problems and worries. Just having someone listen can be so helpful more than it could ever realize. Funny you mentioned that because I was going to ask you or she could see a therapist or a doctor. Yes, I think that's probably for the best. Although things like therapy and medication don't always work for everyone that's tempted to see it as a metric list, but just remember it'll take time. There's so much more that I want to discuss, but fortunately you really caught me at a bad time. It's times like these in particular that I feel awful for not being around. It'll be really nice to see you, Mom. I'm really hoping I can come visit soon. And for what it's worth, you're much stronger than you realize. I'm very proud of you. Just remember that, okay? It's going to make me cry. God damn. God, I feel bad for this character. I really do. His parents are not around. He lives alone, going to school, has a friend struggling with depression. It's just, God almighty, I felt for this character. Wow. I'll try. Give it a day or two before you talk to her. By the way, I think she'll need a little bit more time to cool off. I'm sure that if you apologize for getting angry, rationally explain to her side of things, she'll come around. She never struck me as a girl who can be hold a grudge. Emotionally, we're running high from what I gather, so she'll understand it. And I know what it seems to be bleak, bleak right now, but it'll be okay, Colin. 
I just know it. I really hope so, Mom. Just remember that your your support will be as important as a doctor or a therapist can offer her. You've really got a big heart, so just show that your big heart really is. I love you. Love you too, Mom. Thanks for everything. Anytime. Ring me whenever you need help, okay? Damn. How powerful, man. Powerful. Weirdly, I flopped onto the sofa. Feels like such a lot of having in a short space of time. I just hope Siori and I can patch things up. God damn. That, that's, that's crazy. Woo. Okay, so I'm going to end the video here. Thank you guys a lot for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure you hit the thumbs up, comment, subscribe, check my social medias down below. As always, thank you guys a lot for watching. I'll see you all in the future video. Take it easy.